हेलो डियर व्यूअर्स आई प्रवेश रानावटी वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल वेल्डिंग एजुकेशन वेल आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रीहीट क्रैकिंग इन लो अलो स्टील एंड स्टेनलेस स्टील रीहीट क्रैकिंग फेनोमेना इन लो अलो स्टील्स एंड स्टेनलेस स्टील इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इन दिस पिक्चर यू कुड सी ए क्रैक दैट डेवलप्स आफ्टर Oswell heat treatment and is also called a PWHT cracking or a re reheat cracking or stress relaxation cracking, particularly the heat affected zone. Sometimes also found with the interface of HZ in weld metal, but most of the time in the HZ. By definition, reheat cracking is also known as stress relief cracking. Reheat cracking is related with the PWHT after welding. Because you know PWHT is to be done to soften the hard microstructure to make it tempered microstructure, tempered martensitic microstructure. So to turn into useful mechanical properties. So to reduce residue stresses as well. But uh, PWHT cannot be avoided for heat cracking prevention because PWHT is a mandatory requirement. So this type of cracking observed in the osteotic stainless steel and chromoly vanadium steels. So reheat cracking phenomena is uh, popular with uh, not only with chromoly vanadium steel but also with osteotic stainless steels. Reheat cracking mechanism. Let us understand the mechanism. It is found in the lower steels containing chromoly vanadium because these chromoly vanadium are the secondary carbide formers. They quickly form chromium carbide, molybdenum carbide, vanadium carbides, and uh, with osteotic stainless steel having a niobium and titanium, particularly the stabilized grade T three two one three four seven, and with uh, high carbon content, they are also susceptible to reheat cracking at in elevated temperature because these niobium and titanium are also a strong carbide former, and we know why the addition of niobium and titanium. Because uh, we want that uh, uh, chromium carbide precipitation does not uh, take place because niobium and titanium have higher affinity for carbon than car uh, uh, than carbon, right? Than chromium. So materials having a strong precipitation reaction during PWHT also susceptible for this type of cracking. So any material with a strong precipitation reaction during PWHT. Is uh, susceptible for this type of cracking, and this type of uh, reheat cracking phenomena is not reported in aluminum or titanium alloys until reheat cracking mechanism in low alloy steels. So it is found with the austenitic grain boundaries of the coarse grain region of the heat affected zone. So in case of low alloy steel, there are five conditions that has to be satisfied to reheat cracking to occur first is the elevated temperature thermal gradient because during weld thermal cycle the HZ is subjected to a temperature where osteotic phase forms about S7 temperature and when the exposed in the range of 350 to 550 degrees Celsius the grain growth occurs so this is the first uh, phenomenon is elevated temperature thermal gradient Secondly, carbide dissolution. At a very low carbide dissolution will happen at between the range of 350 to 550 degrees Celsius temperature range. So there is a high precipitation reaction occurs because the solubility during this um, uh, of uh, limit of this uh, phase produce is very low. A very low carbide dissolution we saw excess carbide is precipitated out during this temperature range. And uh, third factor is the residual stress. During the cooling, there exists some residual stresses in the structure. This is also a contributing factor to heat cracking mechanism. Fourth is the reheating into critical temperature range. So during cooling, the microstructure when cooling during uh, cooling between the temperature range from uh, 350 to 550 degrees centigrade, again carbide precipitation reaction occurs. Fifth is a creep or stress relaxation during reheating because because of this additional stress gain during reheating will produce 
will promote this kind of cracking. During well thermal cycle, heat affected cells get heated to a temperature where the grain growth occurs. So that is osteotic phase, we know. Because when it is uh, HZ is uh, passed through a thermal cycle uh, about SC1, and the most of the time, you know, uh, when the uh, at this zone, carbide dissolution is very high in this temperature band. So during cooling, Austenite phase gas converted into the martensite and carbon solubility decreases. So because of the decreased carbon solubility into the martensitic structure, the precipitation and reaction and the stresses will develop. So the stress and precipitation both condition will lead to a reheat cracking along the grain boundaries. So this mechanism is worth understanding. First is the development of uh, austenitic phase during the well thermal cycle and the uh, carbon dissolution is high. Secondly, during cooling, austenitic phase converts into martensite and the carbon solubility decreases. So as a result, there will be a precipitation reaction and the because of the uh, cooling stresses, the both of this will affect our condition will lead to reheat cracking along the grain boundaries. So this cracking normally found in the heat affected zone than in the weld matter. Most of the time it is found with the HZ. So there are some pictures of the HZ, the cracking, reheat cracking, you will obviously see in the heat affected zone. You are over, you will see a cracking. Reheat cracking mechanism in stainless steels. So it is not only found with the chrome moly vanadium steels, low oil steel, but it is also found with the osteotic stainless steel, as I mentioned you earlier especially in the type of 347 grade type stainless steel and is found in the HZ and fusion zone of the thick members because we know this 347 and 321 are stabilized stainless steel grade and uh, there is a presence of niobium and titanium to reduce the intergranular corrosion so uh, because of this niobium titanium they are also carbide formers and during the heating cycle, niobium carbide will get precipitated and the same temperature stress also develop at the grain boundaries which finally ends in cracking. So here the, the mechanism is uh, reheat cracking mechanism is due to niobium carbide uh, formation and the precipitation and the of course there will be a role of stresses. So but the interesting or noteworthy things about this cracking in osteotic stainless steel reheat cracking is that it is not only found in weld metal or not in found with the heat of reserve but also found in the weld metal also so but in the low oil steel it is found only in the heat affected zone so prevention of reheat cracking in my next lecture i am going to discuss about the prevention of reheat cracking